Well, I'll have to sign you guys back in or something. <laughs> <laughs> Next item on the agenda is director's report. Okay, let's see. I have a few things to tell you about. First, with regard to the City Council's recent actions, they held two meetings in September uh, since your last meeting on September 3rd and September 17th. Those were fairly light agendas. There were a few planning-related items. Uh, regarding the art program for the uh, Shell Mound Powell Street Bridge, the council approved a request for proposals and appropriated money for the project. This is a public art project to implement the Shell Mound Street design guidelines. They uh, had further discussion at both meetings on the 3rd and the 17th regarding the master joint occupancy agreement between the city and the school district for the Center of Community Life. Um, the agreement is expected to be voted on by the council in November. Uh, and then, as you may know, every council meeting after a planning commission meeting, I give a verbal director's report on what you did at your previous meeting, and that is uh, that falls generally during the 15-day appeal period. That gives the commission, I mean the council, an opportunity to appeal any of your decisions to themselves if they wish to. So. Uh, during my director's report or following my director's report at the September 3rd meeting uh, where I reported your approval of the ECCL and 3800 San Pablo Avenue projects, Councilmember Asher moved and Councilmember West seconded uh, to appeal the Commission's decision to the Council uh, based primarily on the fact that the bike path is not included uh, at this time. That motion failed on a two to three vote. So it was not, the Council did not appeal that to themselves. And on the 3800 San Pablo Avenue project, Councilmember Asher moved to appeal that uh, to the Council and that failed for lack of a second. The uh, appeal period for both projects ended on Friday, September 6th. No appeal was filed on either one, so the commission counts, Commission's approval of both projects is now final. Yes. I, can I ask why uh, uh, Council Asher wanted to appeal that? Um, I believe she said it had to do with the family-friendly housing aspects or lack thereof. She didn't feel that it was family-friendly enough. Um, on September 17th, the council uh, discussed triangle traffic calming. They heard a report from the public works director about complaints from Oakland residents on 53rd Street that traffic has increased on their street since the traffic calming measures went in in the triangle neighborhood. He presented data to the council showing that the traffic volumes on 53rd Street are actually no higher now than they were before the traffic calming was installed in Emeryville. <clears throat> the council thanked the Oakland residents for expressing their concerns and suggested that they work with the city of Oakland on ways to reduce traffic on their street. And I have a few uh, announcements in addition to the council report. Um, regarding the Sherwin-Williams project, as I previously uh, sent you all an email announcing that there will be a community meeting on that project on Wednesday, October 16th. That will be at 7 p.m. here in the garden level downstairs in, in Old Town Hall in this building. And there will also be a study session on the project at your next meeting on October 24th. Uh, I have a little bit of unfortunate news. The uh, Western Institute for Social Research, which you may recall as a trade school that you all approved in July for occupancy of the ground floor uh, retail space at the View 46 project, um, because of financial entanglements, as they said, on the part of the seller that had not previously been disclosed, the, that educational institution and cafe use, uh, the deal for that has fallen through. And fortunately for them, they were able to locate a suitable replacement space in Berkeley. Unfortunately for us, it looks like due to these financial problems, we will be faced with a vacant storefront for the foreseeable future because apparently nobody can occupy that space until this gets sorted out. They were not told this. Neither was their real estate agent told this until after uh, the, you know, the 11th hour. Also, very sad news, you may have heard that the former uh, <coughs> General Plan and Zoning Update Steering Committee member and one-time chair of it and member of several other city committees, Liz Altieri, passed away recently. Uh, a gathering to celebrate her life will be held at Trader Vic's tomorrow night, tomorrow evening, uh, Friday, September 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. 
uh, in happier news, this year's art show is coming up in October, as it does every year, the annual celebration of the arts. This year it will be at Bay Street in a storefront at the corner of Bay and Christie across the street from The Gap. And um, it will be for three weeks in October. The opening gala um, ceremony will be next Friday, October 4th from 6 to 9 p.m. And finally, I have presents for you. Uh, you may have noticed in front of you is a little book. I picked this up at the APA conference earlier this year. Um, I think it's a pretty good overall overview primer for you know, what it is to be a planning commissioner. It's not specific to California, so you won't be reading about CEQA in here. Uh, but it does, I think, have some pretty good general information and advice. The, uh, and you can see from this book that uh, the role of a planning commissioner is pretty universal across the United States. Of course, it may vary a little bit from state to state, but the, the general uh, <coughs> rules, procedures, and so forth are pretty similar. So I think this is a pretty good reference. Secondly, um, you've got a sheet of paper here that lists a whole lot of documents. And you also have taped to that little sheet of paper a little tiny thumb drive that has all of those documents on it. Um, we finally decided to enter the 21st century. You may all recall when you were oriented, other than our two newest commissioners, I gave you a giant stack of documents and a big canvas bag to carry them in. Well, we don't do that anymore. Now we give them thumb drives. Uh, I have given Commissioner Keller and Gunkel hard copies of the general plan and planning regulations and a few other things, but everything else is on the thumb drive. So just to quickly go over this, there's, I think, eight folders, which are in bold type. You've got the, the, uh, some general planning information, including stuff about the Brown Act and your, your own planning commission rules and regulations. There's a folder on the general plan that has the, that document. By the way, the general plan document that's on this thumb drive is the latest and greatest. It's got all of the amendments in it, including the elimination of the path at Escuela Bilingue, which uh, you won't find that in any of the hard copies. So this, this is the most up to date. It's got uh, the EIR and the housing element, and then there's a subfolder under that that's got all of the various background reports that were prepared as part of the general plan update. Um, the third folder has various area plans, such as San, uh, San Pablo urban design plan, the North Hollis plan, the Park Avenue plan, and so forth. The fourth folder has got a number of topical plans. These cover the entire city, but specific topics like the Parks and Recreation Strategic Plan and the Pedestrian and Bicycle Plan. The fifth folder, which you probably refer to quite a bit, is the planning regulations and the maps and the design guidelines. The planning regulations that are in there are uh, hyperlinked and uh, they have bookmarks and they should hopefully be very easy for you to navigate. All you have to do is click on the thing that you're interested in and it will take you right to it. Uh, the sixth folder is other city regulations that you might want to refer to from time to time, other sections of the municipal code that aren't in the planning regulations, but that sometimes come up. Probably the one you'd use the most is the urban forestry ordinance, which under which the planning commission is required to uh, approve any tree removal permits for street trees. Uh, the seventh folder is state laws, regulations, and information. If you really want to get into it, the entire text of the California State Planning and Zoning Law, Subdivision Map Act, CEQA statute and guidelines, as well as the Office of Planning and Research's annual survey of all cities and counties in California and the status of their general plans is all in there. And finally, the last folder is the recently adopted uh, Plan Bay Area uh, that was required by SB 375. That's the Regional Sustainable Community Strategy and Regional Transportation Plan the draft and final versions as, long, as well as the EIR, and then a, a subfolder there with a whole slew of background documents. Uh, and the reason I included those is that some of the key things you might be looking for, like our RENA number, our regional housing needs allocation, or the projections for future uh, population housing and jobs, those aren't actually in Plan Bay area. You have to look to these background documents to find those things. So the RENA is in the first document there in the supplemental reports and the projections are in the 14th one and then there's a lot of others. So hopefully you will find this useful. I would note that all of these documents take about one gigabyte. Uh, your thumb drive is eight gigabytes, so you've got seven gigabytes to play with where you can uh, store your future planning commission packets or pictures of your kids or you know whatever you choose to use it for. I'd suggest you keep all your 
Emeryville planning related stuff on that thumb drive. Hopefully you'll find it useful. You're supposed to read this by the next meeting, right? Yes, there will be a quiz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for the Thank presence. Thank you. Thank you, this is great. Charlie, um, what's happened with the Palmer Act? I understood the state legislature had no. uh, well, uh, yeah, there was state legislation that uh, was introduced to sort of undo the Palmer decision. The Palmer decision, uh, for those of you who don't, aren't aware, was a court case that basically said that inclusionary zoning for rental projects was uh, illegal because it was basically tantamount to rent control. So that made that that basically made our inclusionary zoning ordinance ineffective with regard to rental housing. It's still in effect with regard to condominiums, but not rentals. This legislation uh, was supposed to undo that so that we could, again, require affordable units in rental projects as well as condominiums, but I don't know what the status is. I believe it was headed to the governor for signature, but I'm not sure what happened. Do you know, um, Michael? No, I, I don't have an update, but um, I could do some research and provide you an update um, electronically. Yeah. We, I'm on the housing committee, and we were told there that it was going to the governor's desk. Right. Yeah. Th that's That was the last I heard. Hopefully he signed it, but who knows. So that concludes my report. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. No questions. Next item on the